morning. My name is Jasmine Harvey, Student Engagement Specialist here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. On behalf of the MPB Education Department, we would like to welcome you all to Workforce Wednesday. We would love to know who is joining us today, so please use the chat feature to let us know who you are and what organization you represent. You may also use the chat feature to ask any questions. Before I introduce our guest speakers, I want to give a quick overview of our workforce initiative. In 2018, MPB received a two-year grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting to create a workforce development initiative. Our initiative, Getting to Work Mississippi, focuses on advancing education and career readiness. We work with partners to assess challenges and opportunities and produce videos focused on career paths and the essential skills needed to be successful. We highlighted careers in these five key industry sectors, energy, manufacturing, healthcare, information technology, and logistics. Through this initiative, we learned not only are students not fully aware of career paths available to them, but they are also lacking those necessary soft skills to be successful. So we produced a fun soft skills video series addressing the do's and don'ts in the workplace. Also out of our initiative, Workforce Wednesday was born. These meetings are hosted every third Wednesday of the month, and we are glad you all have joined us today. All the videos and registration for Workforce Wednesday are available on our website at education.mpbonline.org. And don't worry, I will add the website to the chat. Now it's time to introduce our guest speakers. Today's guest speakers are Arlene Russell-Smith, Vicki Burton, and Broman Robertson. Arlene Russell Smith serves as the District Director of Adult Education at Holmes Community College. Ms. Smith has obtained experience in workforce development by serving as Workforce Specialist at Mississippi Department of Employment Security. She served as a Coordinator and Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Director grant coordinator for the Supplement Nutrition Assistance Program for the college three-year pilot program where she increased the number of students obtaining financial aid grants, as well as served in many federal workforce programs and workforce development. Our next introduction is to guest speaker, Ms. Vicki Burton. Ms. Vicki Burton is the Vice President of Goodwill Industries of Mississippi Incorporation Workforce Development. Ms. Burton has over 30 years of experience in workforce development through the Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation Services, where she retired as Deputy Director of Business Development and State Workforce Development Liaison. Since she began at Goodwill in 2019, Ms. Burton initiated the Workforce Development Department and expanding digital skills training to all four workforce areas in Mississippi, taking Goodwill of Mississippi's footprint from four counties served to 17. Additionally, Burton has developed and implemented the nationally recognized Customer Service Employer Academy and received the Virtual Reality Grant for Goodwill Industries International. Our final guest speaker introduction is Ms. Broman Robertson. Broman Robertson serves as the Office of Adult Education Program Specialist for Workforce and Employer Engagement for Mississippi Community College Board. She also oversees Mississippi's career pathway course, Smart Start. Robertson has over 16 years of community college experience with adult education and workforce development. Her current position allows her to not only serve as an advisor to local adult education programs as they confront Mississippi's workforce needs, but it also allows opportunities to promote adult education and its vital role in the state's economic development. Let's welcome today our guest speakers for Workforce Wednesday. Thanks, Jasmine. We appreciate this opportunity uh, to be here with you all today just to present on adult education and what we're doing across our state. And I know that you're all here to really hear about the partnership between Goodwill and Homes because you can hear from us from a state level all day long, but until you see what we're doing at the local level, it really just does not resonate. So um, I'm just going to give you guys an overview of what we're doing in adult education across the state, who we are and who we serve. 
and where we're located. And then I'm going to hand it off to Erlene and Vicki for them to wrap it up at the end. Um, you will see here that we have the, 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 the term Skill Up Mississippi. That was an initiative that we started with full support here at the Mississippi Community College Board at the Office of Adult Ed that we're so much more than just getting a high school diploma. Um, as many people on this presentation are very familiar with, uh, WIOA came in and just changed the entire landscape of how the core agencies across Mississippi are working together to make sure that all of our participants and residents in Mississippi are career ready. And so when we talk about a skill gap, we talk about a middle skill gap, uh, you know, we, we have a gap right with, when they don't have a high school diploma. So we are so much more than just getting your high school equivalency. Um, if you'll advance the slide, please. So who we are, you know, we are a Title II federally funded agency under the Office of Career Technical and Adult Education. We are housed here at the Mississippi Community College Board, as I mentioned just a moment ago. And we, um, our funds are distributed through AFLA, the Adult Education, Family and Literacy Act. And also just mentioned a little while ago, we are a core partner. Mississippi has a combined state plan and the Office of Adult Education is one of those core partners in our state plan. I can advance. So this is our model of our core partners integration. In Mississippi, the four agencies that are in our state plan, of course, is the Mississippi Department of Employment Security, the Mississippi Department of Rehab Services, and the Mississippi Department of Human Services and Adult Education. And we're in a management referral system that we call the hub, where we are all working together in wraparound services. So looking at this diagram, you can see that a customer can walk into any one of our agencies, any one of our core partner agencies, and we're gonna all be asking the same questions, receiving that same data, the same you know, information regarding barriers, and we are all referring to each other. So let's say, for instance, someone walks into the Mississippi Department of Employment Security looking for a job. One of the very first questions they're going to ask them is, do you have a high school diploma or its equivalency? And if their answer is no, they are automatically referred in that referral system to the nearest adult education program to their address. And so from there, that shows up in, and I'm just going to use Holmes as an example here, it would show up in Arlene's hub in her account it, it, as, a, as an incoming participant and Erlene, all of our programs have someone designated in their programs to take in those incoming referrals. So whoever Erlene has designated in her local program will take that information and call that participant to let them know about intake, orientation, the services that we have. And once that contact is made, that individual will go back into the hub and let that referring agency know hey, we've contacted them, this, this individual's been served, or it could be we could not reach them. Um, there, was, there was an issue with that referral. So we're in this hub together. Um, it seems to be a, a great asset for all of us to be able to just work together with those wraparound services for all of our students. In advance. So this is kind of what I was just explaining on the previous slide. We are, adult education is one of the three pathways in our state plan. And as I mentioned earlier, um, if they ask that question, if they have a high school diploma or not, they're automatically referred to adult education where they are receiving education skills and employability skills. We have changed that, you know, we want to change that mindset. So we want individuals to know that when they're coming into our program, Yes, they're going to get those high school equivalency preparation skills because we know how hard it is for them to walk in that door uh, for you to discuss anything um, other than what they walked in for. It's going to turn them off just a little bit. So we want them to know that, yes, they are coming in for high school equivalency preparation, but we're also going to find out what their career paths are and put them on that path, as you can see over here, also with those employability skills. 
And we also, the other two pathways in the state plan, of, of course, are the career technical education pathway that they're referred to. And if they're work ready uh, through that referral system. But for us in the adult education, you will see that we have arrows now. We want all of our programs to know that our students, from the minute they walk in the door, it's about transitioning. We want to connect them to an employer on a pathway um, our, our mindset is what, how can we invest in you to get you to where you want to be? Advance, please. So who can we serve? 16 years of age or older. Um, they are, they're not enrolled or required to be enrolled in school under the compulsory school law. And for Mississippi, of course, that is 17. Um, if that does occur, we do know there are situations where individuals are dropping out at, you know, at that age. They do have to have withdrawal documentation that is required uh, from the parent and, um, and from the school system. Um, we do uh, provide service for those that do have a high school diploma but lack sufficient mastery of basic educational skills. And I know that you're thinking, okay, those that have a high school diploma, they should be able to be at an eighth or ninth grade level. And you would be very surprised at the amount of students that we do receive in our programs that do have a high school diploma, but they do lack those reading or math skills at that level. And then we also have classes uh, where they are unable to speak, read or write. So we have our ESL classes at well, uh, as well. Advanced. So some of our free, everything in our programs are free. And a lot of people are like, yeah, what's the catch on that? But really everything is free in our programs. They don't pay for a pencil. They don't pay for a textbook. All of the software, everything that you are going to hear from Erlene's program is they, everything is free. Same as, same as with Vicki's program. Um, we offer classes in uh, four different formats now. Um, of course, with COVID, that just made us rethink some things. And so... Um, all of our classes are free. Um, our My Best program um, is free. That is where they um, are in a college, uh, college career technical education program or a workforce training while they are working on their high school equivalency. And we'll discuss that a little bit further today. The Smart Start course, workforce preparation course is free as well. All of our classes, um, the ACT Work Keys curriculum, that is the software that all of our students are in. Um, it's also available to any community agency. You just partner up with your community college and you're able to provide this to your participants. All of our core partners, um, Department of Human Services, Department of Rehab, as well as Department of Employment Security, all have an account um, under the contract with ACT to be able to uh, provide this service for your participants. So if someone is in your office and they want to apply for a job in the NCRC, is one of those tests or one of those measurements in order for them to apply for that job, you have access to this curriculum. Um, so just reach out to us and let us know about that and we can you know, guide you to that. And of course the NCRC, the National Career Readiness Certificate, those work keys assessments are free to all of our students as well as sitting for the test. So where are we located? We are located, uh, we're servicing all 82 counties. Um, we are at all of our community colleges. And of course, you know, they all work in districts. So they're all, they're servicing all of their counties. Um, they take into account the population and the need. Um, and, 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 you know, you'll probably hear more about that from Arlene and where her, um, where her classes are offered. But as you can see, we're at every community college. We're also in three K-12 systems, as you can see over on the right of your screen. And then we are also providing adult education classes in the Department of Corrections. So if you're interested in one of our programs, you can go to our website at skillupmississippi.com backslash hashtag programs. And if you just click on a county, um, you don't necessarily have to click over to the right on, on the college. If you just click on the county that you live in, that's gonna bring up the director's information. Um, as a matter of fact, like if you clicked on Madison County, Madison County falls into Holmes's district. So you would click on Madison County. It would bring up Erlene's um, name, email, address, phone number, as well as a direct link to their adult education page. So all the information that you need is right there. In advance.
three options for high school equivalency uh, diploma here in Mississippi, which has been appro uh, approved by the Mississippi Department of Education. Of course, we all know about the GED. Uh, that's been around um, forever. So a lot of students, when they walk in our doors and they'll say, I, I want to get my GED. Um, and so we're, like I said, that skill up, we're just trying to change that mindset, but also to let them know they have other options for high school equivalency. So everybody knows about the GED. Um, the high set is another, another test. And then we also have the competency-based high school equivalency option. And this was an initiative uh, by, pre uh, by our previous adult education um, director, uh, Sandy Christ, and and now Assistant Executive Director over Special Programs, Dr. Rachel Devon, they felt like this was a great um, opportunity for students that um, could not maybe pass that last test. Um, they're in our My Best program. They are um, a higher level student. They've scored a silver on the NCRC and they've had 15 hours of college credit. They felt that this student had mastered probably more than high school um, completers or the seniors that are in high school that have not completed, you know, 15 hours of college credit. So this was a great initiative that they fought for for our students. Um, we do have a couple of colleges that have embraced this. So three options um, for our students to be able to receive um, a high school equivalency. And I will tell you, um, if you have someone that says, I'm just going to drop out of high school and I'm going to go take my GED or my high set, it has changed a lot um, in the last several years. Um, I can say that uh, my brother dropped out of high school when he was um, a senior and it has changed dramatically from when we were helping him prep for his GED at that time to what our students are. It is truly, truly high school equivalency preparation. We are going by the college and career ready standards, the same as K-12. So everything is aligning um, with each other. Next slide. So our Smart Start course, um, which you're, you'll hear Arlene talk about, but I just, from, from our state office standpoint, we wanted our students in adult education that were going to go through this class um, to be, not just be about career awareness. Uh, we didn't want them just to learning about careers and learning how to search for jobs. We want our students to understand what Mississippi is about and the jobs that are in Mississippi and the job sectors that, that, are, that, are, that are, you know, our leaders are telling us that are gonna be the hot jobs in the next several years. And we wanna make sure our students are on the path to those jobs. And we also wanna make sure that this class is relevant to our students. So when you tell them that, hey, over 6,000 employers are telling us that they want teamwork and y'all, this isn't, this isn't new. I've been in workforce development since 05, Erlene has too. I mean, we all have, it's, this is not anything new. Our, our employers are wanting punctuality. They're wanting communication. They're, they're, we're, put the cell phones down, you know? So we want our students to understand this class is teaching them those things that will help them keep the job. We also want them to know that over 63% of the jobs that are coming to Mississippi are gonna have that middle skill definition by the Department of Labor. And that of course is a skill more than high school, but not necessarily that four years. OK, and then we also want them to know that over twenty six hundred employers are recognizing the National Career Readiness Certificate and they're employing um, in their hiring practices. So everything about our course, we want it to be employment education. Um, so when they are doing career awareness and they are going through their personalities um, assessments and, and, you know, learning what they like to do and then they're doing that job search. OK, is this something I'm going to like to do? So. Also, we teach them about their areas. Um, where do you live? Um, you know, and I use this example all the time. You know, I'm, a, I'm from Holmes County, very rural area. Um, if somebody had sat down and said, Bronwyn, you want to major in social work in, in Holmes County and West, you're not going to be able to live near mama. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to probably commute to Jackson or commute somewhere. And, and this is going to be your salary. I'm not saying I would have rethought that, but we would have had, you know, there would have been some conversations about maybe going ahead and pursuing my master's after my bachelor's or something like that. So just having those relevant conversations with our students. Um, all of our students um, are also, uh, they also have a Mississippi Works account. We do make sure that they have a Mississippi Works account where they can get attached to, to employers in our state and see what our employers are, are looking for. 
Next slide. So this is just a fact sheet that we hand out to everybody. Smart Start, um, it is a 45 hour class. We do believe that it is a behavioral change type class. Um, we, it is really best taught in a face-to-face. -face. Um, it's a, like I said, it's 45 hours. They have to pass with a 75 or higher on the three areas of career awareness, uh, financial literacy, and um, those necessary skills. And then it, when they sit for the work keys assessment, if they pass that with a bronze or higher, they receive a Smart Start credential. Now, if they don't, if they let's say they do the 45 hours, they they um, they pass with 75 or higher on on all of their curriculum because we're talking about budgeting, we're talking about interviewing. I mean, we're, you can see it over here to the right hand side, and I just want to give a shout out to getting to work over here. We do use getting to work through MPB as a tool for our students to be able to go see those videos and to go see um, those those job sectors that that um, that our leaders have told us are, are coming and where that training is available. Th those are two great tools, get on the grid and getting to work that we use with our students. Um, we've embedded both of those in our classes, but let's say they've gone through all of that. They've passed with 75 or higher. They've attended when they're supposed to attend, but they can't get over that last test of the work keys assessment. Maybe they, they just could not get past that math. Maybe they were a brawn one and just could not get the math, okay? Well, then they get a Smart Start certificate because we want them to be able to show employers, hey, we've been through this class. We do have those skills that can retain and that, um, that we can you know, retain our employment. We do know how to get along with others. We know how to be on time. And so we come back to that and we'll say, okay, look, you didn't pass that one part. You can come back and take that one last assessment. So they don't have to retake the entire work keys assessments over again. They can take that one area over and then they will receive a Smart Start credential. You can add that. So this is just the NCRC. If you're not familiar with the NCRC, this is just a tool for our employers to know if someone has the work skills to be successful on a job. It, it, it gives a level of a three to a seven. It's not really a great equivalency. Um, and this has been around for years. Um, and really the best way that I can tell you is ACT in the high schools will tell you know, colleges if individuals can do the academic work where work keys assessments, the NCRC tells an employer if you can be trained. It's more of a technical, um, it's that applied math is math they're gonna be doing every day on the job. Graphic literacy is looking at graphs and charts and, and things of that nature. And workplace documents are gonna be the workplace documents they're gonna see on a job, maybe, uh, you know, some OSHA documents or maybe uh, orientation documents or policy and procedure documents. So it's really, really work related. And it gives that employer a baseline because I think we can all agree that a high school diploma coming from North Mississippi down to South, East or West may not be the same material. So it just really gives the employers an idea of how well an individual can be trained. Um, a three is a bronze, four is a silver, a five is a gold, and then six to a seven is a platinum. So of course, the higher level that you score on the NCRC, um, just lets an employer know the level of the job that, that you can do. Next slide. So I'm just about to be finished here. I don't wanna take too much of the time because I really want you to hear from these guys, but we, we housed uh, our Smart Start course in Canvas back in 2019, just to house it. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a really good face-to-face -face class, but thank goodness that we did have uh, that mindset to do that back in 2019, because who would have ever thought we would have had to go online in 2020. So this course was built, it was ready. Uh, it was able, you know, we were easily able to transition a lot of our students over to an online format where they could finish. And this is the home page. So this is when a student logs into Canvas. This is what they see pretty much, unless our teachers have changed their home page to be more about their course, um, you know, maybe with a video or a welcome or something. But this is just pretty much the format that we have. And some things that you'll notice on here that I've not mentioned earlier is the uh, job shadowing and the customer service, as well as the digital portfolio. Those are three things that we added to the course because 
uh, Department of Education came out last year and approved Smart Start as a dual credit substitute for the college and career ready graduation requirement that is now in K-12. So they looked at our course and said, hey, we, we do line up with a lot of things, but there are three things that we don't line up on. And so we said, well, let's add them because if our colleges want to be able to add this because this is a college credit course, um, there is a college, you know, there's a college course tied to it. Uh, if our colleges do want to offer this as a college credit, then we'll already have it built. So we added this for, for those that were interested in it becoming in a, using it as a dual credit, um, as a dual credit substitution. I just want to let you guys know about that. You can advance. So I wanted to show you just kind of like what a course looks like um, this and how we're consistent across the state. This is a six week schedule. Um, the, I know, I think Vicki and Erlene's class, maybe four, can't remember four or five, but so, but we're all consistent in what we do. We want all of our students um, to be in the class four, five, six weeks. We, we leave it up to our programs, but this is Northeast Mississippi Community Colleges um, program. And as you can see, um, they've got it all lined out where the students are in class Monday through Thursday from eight to 12, and they're using that Friday for makeup work. Um, if, if, they, if they miss a day, they can come in and make up, get tutoring, uh, whatever, whatever they may need. Um, and as you can see in the orange, they have that work keys curriculum embedded in the Smart Start course to where our students are receiving high school equivalency preparation while they're in this course. Because like I said, they came in for high school equivalency preparation. We want them to know that they are working toward that. And we've seen some great correlation between the curriculum um, to their high school equivalency progression. Our students are are progressing a lot quicker that are in the curriculum um, aside from the ones that are that are not. So just wanted to give you guys an idea um, of how that that how our programs are running this, how they're running Smart Start, and then they all take a pretest before they ever go into the curriculum. So over to the left hand side, you'll see where you know we know like they could take a predicted level and they come in and say that's where that teacher can say, okay, if you were to go take applied math on the NCRC today you might would score three, but let's get in the, these modules. Let's get in this applied math, you know, for the next several days, 30 or so minutes a day, and let's see if we cannot increase your score, maybe to get a silver, um, you know, or to, to get a gold. So that's that's why we're in the curriculum. We don't want them just taking it um, the, the moment they come in. We want to enhance their chances of being more employable when they um, when they leave our classes. In advance. So this is our My Best program. This is where I mentioned earlier that all of our community colleges have a My Best program. This is where they are working um, on their high school equivalency while they are in a CTE or workforce class at the same time. And we just think this is probably the best kept secret across Mississippi that students that have dropped out of high school how wonderful it is for them to be able to walk into one of our adult education doors and, and they sit down with a college and career navigator and that they say, okay, you're actually a candidate for, you know, high school equivalency while working on your high school diploma to go into welding or go into advanced manufacturing or go into computers or IT or, or whatever that may be. Um, at the same time. And so um, if you're interested, I won't go into too much detail about that. I'll let Arlene talk about my best at homes, but this is across our state and every single one of our adult education programs, students don't pay for tools, they don't pay for books, they don't pay for anything. And their tuition um, is paid for as well. So if you're interested, um, like I mentioned earlier on a previous slide, you just go to mybest.skillupmississippi.com forward slash and that will bring up um, our My Best page and you can look up where, um, where all of our programs, all the programs that are offered and where they're offered. So what does this all look like in adult ed? I know you're like, okay, this is all great and all, but what does this all look like? We trained all of our programs this last year on how to build multi-level pathways, as Jasmine mentioned earlier, and when we were talking about creating multi-level career pathways for our students, 
We want our students to see things like this when they walk in the door with us. If they say, I want to be an RN one day, or I want to go into surgical tech, or I want to do this. Well, over 60% of the individuals that come into adult education do not read or at a math level above sixth grade. So some of our students, it takes time and we want to have those real conversations with them. Okay. Yes, that is definitely a goal that we can that we can get to, but we're going to have to get on that pathway to that. And it may be CNA first. Um, it may be other credentials first to get you there. What we want to do, the mindset that we have is that we want all of our students to be um, for, for all of them to have more skills, that their skills are enhanced more than when they walked in the door with us. And that's the mindset that we have, no matter their grade level, because you can see, you're going to probably think, okay, first through fourth grade, grade equivalency. Yes, we are, we're, I, I, you know, I'm sure early is going to be shaking her head. Yes, we have those students fourth to sixth grade level. Yes, we have those students, but y'all were so successful with them. So successful with them. And so I just wanted to show you kind of what a path would be, what, what we're changing all of our career pathways to look like when a student walks in our door, our programs know that they've got the pathways mapped out for our students. And then at the end of this, where are we going to go with that CNA? CNA may not be the last thing that we're going to do, but that's going to get them a job to where they can start bringing some income in. But we're not going to stop there. Do we want to go on into further allied health programs? Um, you know, so do we want to go into apprenticeship? Do we want to go um, into on the job training? What, what do we want to do with these things? And so all of our programs, you will notice up in the left hand side that how we had, um, we've asked them all to come up with uh, certificates, credentials, things that students can be working on while they're in their programs, while they're on a pathway that's relevant to their pathway. So just going back to my initial slide, I know I've rushed through a lot, but I, I just, I know that you guys wanna hear about that partnership, but just going back to my initial slide, you know, adult education is about scaling up now. Um, we've never seen ourselves in workforce development before and, and we're here. So uh, just um, if I'll take questions at the end of the presentation, um, but I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Arlene and Vicki now. All right, good afternoon. To start with, I want to give you a little information about Goodwill. The state of Mississippi is actually covered by three Goodwill territories. From about Oxford North is covered by Goodwill of Memphis. The bottom six counties in the state are covered by Goodwill of South Mississippi. We are Goodwill of Mississippi. We cover the 59 counties in the middle. People think Goodwill only exists to take the things you donate, sell them to make money. We do take your stuff and sell it, but there's a lot more to it than just that. Every Goodwill has its own mission. Our mission here at Goodwill of Mississippi is to assist individuals with disabilities and other barriers to obtain employment. The stores you see only exist to support that mission. 83 cents out of every dollar spent there goes back into that mission. All of that being said, one of the ways we're trying to fulfill that mission and prepare people for work is our Customer Service Employment Academy, and we're really, really proud of it. This is a training program that allows students to receive a national certification in customer service. Students learn things like connecting with customers, handling dissatisfied customers, handling multiple customers, uh, and communicating with customers on the phone. That's just to name a few of the skills they get while they're in there. These things are done through classroom instruction, hands-on activities, simulations, and role-playing. Once this is all done, students take an exam and receive that national certification. This credential is already recognized by numerous businesses. These businesses include Disney, Walmart, Target, Lowe's, Kroger, the list goes on and on. Customer service skills are needed for every job. It doesn't matter if you own your own business or you wanna be a flight attendant, you must have customer service skills. When we started thinking about training programs here, we felt like this was an area that was lacking in the world today and that businesses needed people trained in customer service. To make this happen, we needed partners. 
I believe that we can each do good things, but together we can do great things. We realized adult education was a great partner for this training. We spent a year meeting with the amazing staff at the community college board to make this happen. Cindy Gooden, if you're out there, thank you. Um, she spent hours with me working on this project. Um, they were able to bring in homes uh, to offer Smart Start as, as part of the program, which only strengthened our ability to do this program. So far, 19 students have graduated with a national certification in customer service skills. This month, we started a class with an additional 10 students. Uh, I'll tell you a story. One of the students in our very first class, she was upset and she cried the entire first day. Our instructors in the class, our other students, they just kept encouraging her, kept just telling her that she could do it. The last day of class, when she graduated with that national certification, she had the biggest smile in the room on her face. Uh, her dream job was to work for Rankin County School District. She had tried every way, we had tried every way we could to get her foot in the door, but we weren't successful. Once she got that smart start and that national certification in customer service, she started this school year, this month, working in the Frontiers program for Rankin County School District. She's doing them a great job. So this program gave her the ability to do what she had dreamed of doing for a long time. Um, so I, that's kind of the gist of what's going on with our program. But I wanna close by telling you that this program is open to the public. Our goals are to expand this program to other parts of the state continuing to have this great partnership with the community college board and with other community colleges like Holmes. But we also want to start to try to partner with businesses. And so, cause we want to supply them with a good employee but also supply our students with a great career on the other side of this program. So I am, I, I'm here today to ask all of you people on here to please help us. You know, we, we need each of you to be able to work together, help us do this. Workforce in the state of Mississippi has got to be a group effort. We've got to continue to partner together. So I ask you today to help us do that and help us to continue to move forward. And I'm going to turn it over to Erlene and let her wrap things up. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Erlene Smith. I am super excited about the partnership that we have with Goodwill. Um, this program has really taken off. Um, and, and the initiative, Homes Community College uh, provided the educational resources. Uh, we provided a Smart Start instructor, and we also provided a College and Career Navigator. Our College and Career Navigator offers uh, support services to our students. She provides uh, the students uh, and assists them with barriers that they may have and refer them out to our other WIOA partners to ensure their students' success. She also assists those students who are interested in college uh, with the admission process as well as with financial aid. Um, not only if, they're, if they want to go to college, if they want to go into workforce or employment, our college and career navigator is there for that. Our Smart Start class is just phenomenal. Um, it's an excellent training to assist participants in getting employment and also more importantly, maintaining employment. The class has been really, really good for those students. Um, students have, I noticed in that Goodwill class, they have established relationships with each other. They enhance their communication skills. When I first, the first day of the class, everybody was quiet as church mouse. By the end of the class, everybody was talking freely. They seemed more confident. And I was really proud of that. And also with this class, the students have improved their math and reading um, skills uh, while using work keys. Um, the students, we had students to do very well on the NCRC. Uh, we even had a student to even score platinum. So I was very proud of that. 
Um, we look forward to the upcoming year. We've already started class number three, and we're going to offer an additional class. Uh, this fall, we're going to offer two classes in the spring. And we also want to mention that we're currently doing intake and enrollment at our classes all over the district at home. So if you know anyone who is interested in enrolling in our adult education class, please refer them to us. This is a team effort. Uh, we need everybody on board to help us be successful. Our classes are student-centered. We have a very friendly learning environment and we have exceptional teachers and a wonderful support staff. So please refer anyone to our program. We'll be more than happy to assist them. Thank you. Well, thank you to our guests, Bronwyn, Bronwyn Vicki and Erlene. That was such great information about this new Customer Service Academy and this collaborative. Um, we need more of these in Mississippi and we are super excited that you have them. So if our participants today, those of you who have come on, if you enjoyed that presentation, you learned something, let's go down to the reaction button. Let's get a little bit of engagement and let's give these ladies a thumb up, a heart, a hand for sharing this wonderful information with us today. We think you did a great job. There are a few questions um, that we have here. So the first one, Bronwyn, I'm going to ask to you. Someone asked, okay. is, it, is it difficult to recruit students? Um, what is a likely profile of a student in the program, young, older? That's the question for you. Yeah, well, and actually, yes, it is a little bit difficult to recruit students. So if you heard Earlene's pitch there at the end, like, please, please. We, yes, for some reason, it is difficult um, to recruit. I, I, I would say that a lot of our students come to us and Earlene can kind of like, I guess, add this by word of mouth to some degree, um, as much as we're out in our communities. And that's why we've started really just trying to get the word out. And that's, that's my my main role here at the board now in the Office of Adult Ed is just to get the word out about what we're doing and, and showing our community organizations um, things that we're partnering with, such as, you know, Goodwill and Homes. Um, now, as far as the age, um, Arlene, wouldn't you say you're seeing more younger right now enrolling? Yeah. Yeah, more younger right now because of COVID, mm -hmm. um, but we have them from 16 to 60. Yeah, or even older. Um, but I think the main thing of, as far as retention is concerned is, is creating a, a, a safe space and a fun learning environment for them so they can stay engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you just get them, just getting them there and actually um, allowing them to open up to us and, and um, also getting them motivated to stay with us. Um, Getting them there is kind of easy, but motivating them to stay is probably the, the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Mm -hmm. Here's a question for you, Vicki. Um, you spoke about expanding this program, and we heard Ms. Erling say that there are the number of classes that have been added and, and um, looking forward to expansion as well. How do you expect to expand this to and get those employers um, involved that you spoke about? Uh, as far as expanding the training program, we actually word got out about this class and we got a call from East Central Community College that started wanted to have started meeting with us, wanting us to bring it there already to, to their campus in mm -hmm. the County. Um, and so we're trying to work out the logistics of getting that done right now with the businesses. It's just going to have to be groups of people like this getting the word out and telling businesses, we have employees for you that can do these jobs. Um, I would love to say that we have the funds available for me to hire somebody. I would love to eventually have the funds to hire somebody whose job it is, is to go out and educate businesses on this. Right now, it's us. It's this group of people whose job it is to educate people on the great programs that we have going on in Mississippi and try to make those fits. Thank you, Vicki. So there you have it, everyone. It's our job. So we're to help these, <laughs> these ladies, these institutions to promote this program because I think we all probably have had our own customer service experience where we say, hey, they might need a little more training. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, Bronwyn, there's another question on the table for you. 
Okay. How can children who are about to age out of false, the foster care system take advantage of the programs you spoke about? Is there a different process or the same process? No, it's the same process. And it's so interesting, that question. I saw it and I was going to wait and answer it here. Um, we're actually meeting with representatives um, today and um, over the next couple of weeks of working with them and trying to get the word out to those, um, not just those aging out, but foster parents about what we do and the services that we provide um, for, for those individuals. So it, the, the intake process is not any different. Um, it's just knowing, and I will tell you, we already know up front, Arlene talked about the college and career navigator and how vital they are in our role. It's so vital for us to know the barriers of our students because we can't help them, you know, we can't help them retain in our program and provide them the services and connect them to the resources in order to help them stay and progress. So I would say if we already know and I, you know, that they are coming, um, they are about to age out or they, there, there are some things going on. That's wonderful for us to know because we're already prepared and can get some things in place. Yes. And there's a one last question I see here, and it's asking about um, since the recruiting process might be difficult, are students receiving any type of stipends as incentives? Arlene, do you want to answer to that? Because right now we're not giving any stipends, um, but like I said, we have a warm environment uh, that um, I think once you get them here, once uh, once you can get them in the in the door, I can ke- I can keep them here. Uh, just to motivate the the team that I have in place. They are so student centered and they go above and beyond for our students, um, um, for our teachers to make sure that they stay successful. So um, no, we don't have any incentives right now, but we'll do more, anything that we can to make sure that they stay here and they stay successful. Well, and I'll kind of add to that, Tara, just so I can let everybody know, um, our funds are very strict. We are federally funded. And so um, I would have to say probably a majority of the expenses that that come out, that come to us, we have to put into instructional methods for our students. So it, it has got to go into serving the student in an instructional method in that classroom. So very strict guidelines on how we can even spend our funds. Of course. And Bronwyn, I believe this one will be, is for you as well. And there's another one here about ABE classes. Mm-hmm. Can someone enter at in, any time or are there specific times that they have to enter? Well, I'm, I'm going to speak. I saw Arlene about to speak, but I'm going I'm to say Arlene's doing intake and orientation right now. But I can tell you right now that uh, if she had someone call, she would set something up for them uh, to come on in and visit or meet with them. Absolutely. So Arlene, do you want to touch on that? Yes, yes. Um, anytime, just have someone to call. We usually do manage enrollment, but I would love if anyone calls me uh, interested in our program, we invite them to come in and, and see what their goals and aspirations are, and we'll get them started with the process. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And for the this particular program, the Academy, which one of you ladies is the primary contact to receive or to give information about that program? Can someone reach out to either of you or one particular person? You, you can reach out to either one of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we, work, we work really well together. So <laughs> uh, we're always in contact with each other. Absolutely. I love Vicki. Vicki Vicky has been phenomenal through this whole process. Mm-hmm. Well, Vicki, we thank you for letting us know about what all Goodwill does and how that 83 cents of every dollar goes toward such um, improving the lives and career paths and education of our students here in Mississippi. So the citizens of Mississippi, so that's a wonderful program. And we think this collaborative is just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So we wanna thank you all again, our our guest, Earlene Russell Smith with Holmes Community College, Bronwyn Robertson, with the Workforce Employer Engagement at Mississippi Community College Board and Vicki Burton, Vice President of Goodwill Industries of Mississippi. Thank you, ladies. All of their contact information have been put in the chat. We thank you, thank you, thank you. And we thank you all for visiting with us today. But before we go, we have some prizes to give away. So I will turn it over to Jermaine for our door prize time. Hey, good um, afternoon now, everybody. 
Um, today is now is door prize time. So of course we are super excited about this. We've got a new system for our door prizes. So we are super excited about getting this wheel to spin. And so I'm going to ask my assistant Jasmine to go ahead and start that wheel. The wheel will actually choose the person by itself. So if you do get chosen, make sure that you send an email with your mailing address to me. That'll be Jermaine.flood at MPB online. Org. All right, Jasmine, we're ready. Congratulations to Paige Hutchinson. You are the winner of door prize number one. We are now ready for door prize number two. I mean, this is fantastic. I love this little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is definitely a Jasmine Harvey yeah. <laughs> tool there that we found. Okay, Jasmine, we are ready for door prize winner number two. Jacqueline Jones, you are door prize winner number two. Congratulations, door prize winner number three. Here we go. <laughs> Julia Viator, you are door prize winner number three. Congratulations to you. And then now we're going to throw in a fourth door prize um, because we we like door prizes. So Jasmine, go ahead and give the wheel another spin. Final door prize winner is Shelby Walker. Congratulations to you. You all have won our door prizes for this time. That door prize does include a MPB American Graduate stationery set. It includes an MPB American Graduate water bottle. All of them are beautifully color coordinated. We've got um, our battery pack and some extra goodies in that door prize for you. Make sure you email me your mailing address. Again, that's Flood at mpbonline.org. Congratulations to all of our door prize winners. Up next is our announcements. And we wanted to go ahead and tell you that we are looking for student leaders. We um, here in the MPB Education Department are looking for students in 8th through 12th grade to become our new MPB Student Council members. If you know a student with leadership qualities and are willing to work on projects to help inform Mississippians, send their name to Jasmine. That's jasmine.harvey at mpbonline.org. And have you listened to our education podcast? If not, I want to make sure that you all know about it and you can go out there and check us out. Our next upcoming episode will be published this Friday. That's going to be a chat with Dr. Ebony Lumumba, First Lady of Jackson. You already know she is the First Lady of Jackson. She's also the Department Chair of English, Foreign Languages, and Speech Communication at Jackson State University. She's also the founder of Mojo, that's Mothers Obtaining Justice and Opportunities. That's a nonprofit organization. And she is the host of Mississippi Public Broadcasting's Right on Mississippi podcast in partnership with the Mississippi Book Festival and the Mississippi capital city of Jackson's First Lady. Of course, that is going to be her episode coming up this Friday on Chalkboard Chat. You can visit chalkboardchat.mpbonline.org for more information. Next Workforce Wednesday, we want to see you there. That'll be coming up September 15, 2021. Everybody come on back. We look forward to um, sitting down, chatting with you again, and just having a great time during Workforce Wednesday. And if you've missed any of our Workforce Wednesday presentations, don't worry at all. They are all available on our website at gettingtowork.mpbonline.org. 
And then make sure that you sign up for our newsletter. You can stay abreast of the happenings in the MPB Education Services Department by signing up for our monthly MPB Education Newsletter. You can see it right there on the screen. We want to make sure that you stay in the know of what we've got going on here and things that affect you. Again, that's the MPB Education Newsletter. And then to learn more about us and our education department, you can visit our education website and social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at MPB Education. We thank you all for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.